It is one of the most inhospitable places on earth. A place of extremes where there is more death than life, more destruction than creation. A place where even the air you breathe can kill you. This is a place that is home to some 90 million people. They live under the shadow of a supervolcano. Their very survival depends on the kindness of nature, a nature that has a habit of turning nasty. If it blows its top, the entire human race could be wiped out in an instant. They're living on borrowed time. Welcome to our series, Living on the Brink. Today we look at Yellowstone National Park. It is one of the most popular tourist destinations in the world. It attracts more than 4 million visitors every year. Why wouldn't it? It offers breathtaking views, snow-capped mountains, gushing waterfalls, and of course, geysers. The largest concentration of geysers in the world. Old Faithful erupting every 90 minutes or so. Mammoth hot springs looking like something straight out of another planet. Yellowstone is home to all of these wonders. And yet this paradise is built on hell. There is a volcano here, one of the largest in the world. Just one problem though, it's a bit temperamental. Yellowstone lies directly over a hot spot, a magma chamber that extends 600 miles from the small town of West Yellowstone in Montana to Great Bend in the state of New Mexico. The park itself straddles three states. In total it covers an area of 2.2 million acres which is larger than Rhode Island and Connecticut combined, and it's home to thousands of hot springs and geysers. But the most famous of them all is the aptly named Grand Prismatic Spring. At 370 degrees Fahrenheit, only bacteria can survive in its scalding waters. Its colors are produced by algae that grow around the edges. The water is so toxic that if you were to step into it, you would be boiled alive. That's not exactly great news for those living nearby. Yellowstone's eruptions have the potential to wipe out all life on Earth. Here's why. Over millions of years, the magma chamber underneath Yellowstone has created a massive caldera. It is roughly 45 by 28 miles across. This is essentially a giant hole in the ground. And what makes it so dangerous is that it is sitting on top of a fault line. Should the magma chamber erupt, it could send a wall of fire and molten rock hundreds of miles in all directions. Ash would shoot up into the atmosphere and spread across the northern hemisphere. In the surrounding areas, everything would be vaporized. Entire towns would disappear in seconds. The closest town to Yellowstone is called Gardner, Montana. It has a population of about 600 people. Most of them work in the park as guides or in hotels. Some run small businesses. All of them know they are living on borrowed time. The next eruption of Yellowstone could wipe them out, and eruptions are nothing new here. There have been three major ones in the past 2 million years. The oldest dates back 2.1 million years. It was 1,000 times more powerful than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. Then came the eruption 1.3 million years ago. Again, it was much more powerful than anything humans have ever done. Finally, there was the Lava Creek eruption 640,000 years ago. It was also the largest, covering more than 2,000 square miles with ash. The last eruption was so intense that it left a permanent scar on the land. The magma chamber had collapsed. It left behind a giant crater. This is the Yellowstone Caldera. It measures 45 by 28 miles, which is almost as large as the entire city of London. But that was 640,000 years ago. Since then, life has found a way to reclaim the land. Geysers and hot springs have sprung up everywhere. Wildlife has returned. So have the people. But Yellowstone has barely had a break. Even after 640,000 years, it's still simmering. Beneath the picturesque landscape, the magma chamber continues to grow. Scientists believe that it could erupt again at any moment. Yellowstone is one of five supervolcanoes in the world. The others are in Indonesia, Japan, New Zealand, and Italy. But Yellowstone is the only one that scientists believe could threaten humanity. Its magma chamber is simply too large. It has the potential to unleash hell on Earth. It contains 4.2 trillion gallons of molten rock. If it erupts, molten rock will shoot hundreds of miles into the air. It will rain down on the surrounding areas and turn them to glass. Entire forests will be wiped out, trees will explode, lakes will boil, every living thing will be vaporized. But what will happen outside of Yellowstone National Park? Scientists say that depending on the strength of the blast, ash and debris could reach parts of Canada, Mexico, and the United States. Closer to the volcano, there would be mudslides, flash floods, and earthquakes. The U.S. Geological Survey says that the closest towns to Yellowstone would be hit hardest. Those towns include West Yellowstone in Montana, East Idaho Falls and Rexburg in Idaho, and Cook City in Montana. They lie just 40 miles away. If Yellowstone erupts, these towns would be buried under meters of ash. 
further away 200 miles or so entire cities could be buried under six inches of ash. The United States government knows all of this, it has a plan in place in case Yellowstone erupts. Should that happen, 14,000 tons of ash would fall on the American Midwest every second for weeks on end. Airplanes would have to be grounded, roads would be impassable, farmers would lose their crops, the economy would grind to a halt, at the very least, 9,000 people would be killed, schools would be closed indefinitely, the U.S. military would be deployed to maintain order, teams of experts would go door to door telling residents how to protect themselves against falling ash, face masks would be handed out to children and the elderly, fire trucks would stand by in case houses caught fire, and yet despite all of this, life would go on, humans would survive, they always do. But the same cannot be said for wildlife. Nearly half of all species in Yellowstone would be wiped out, plants would die, animals would burn to death, birds would fall from the sky, fish would jump out of lakes and rivers and die on dry land. Only the hardiest of creatures would survive, the ones who are able to withstand high temperatures. So what would a day in Yellowstone look like after the eruption? First off let's talk about the weather. Temperatures would soar. The average temperature in Yellowstone is 40 degrees Fahrenheit. After the eruption it could rise to 122 degrees Fahrenheit, that's because the magma chamber would release a lot of heat. And since there would be no wind, that heat would be trapped inside the caldera. It would get so hot that any creature unfortunate enough to be inside, would be burned to a crisp. As for daylight hours they would be shorter, ash would block the sun, so it would get dark earlier in the evening, also it would rain, not water ash. For days on end it would rain ash, the sky would be filled with dark clouds, lightning would strike, thunder would boom, rain would fall and cover the land in a thick layer of ash. If you managed to survive the initial blast, you would have to deal with ash. It would pile up on trees, buildings and dead bodies. It would cover entire towns and bury them under a thick blanket. It would be impossible to see through the ash. You would need a shovel to dig yourself out of it. You would need goggles to protect your eyes from the wind-blown ash. You would need an air purifier to breathe, otherwise, the ash would damage your lungs. The air itself would be poisonous. And then there would be the earthquakes. The magma chamber's movements could trigger seismic activity as far away as California. For months on end, the ground beneath your feet would rumble. Buildings would collapse, roads would crack, bridges would crumble, mountains would break apart, landslides would occur, rivers would change course. It would be absolute hell on earth. And yet amidst all of this, life would find a way to survive. Nature always finds a way. So we can take some solace in knowing that should Yellowstone blow its top, life on Earth would go on. It may not be the same ever again, but it would go on. For now though, we must enjoy the present while it lasts. We must marvel at the beauty of nature. We must take time to appreciate the wonders of Yellowstone National Park. Who knows when it will erupt again? Who knows how much time we have left before that happens? One thing is certain though, when it does, the world will never be the same ever again.